Hey there students, in this lecture I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Pennsylvania Colony, continuing our studies of colonial America. Now I've also created a lecture on the Quakers, so if you want a little bit of context, be sure to look at that in addition to my lectures on colonial America. And quick shout out to my main man, Lewis, okay, which he's not in Pennsylvania, he's in New Jersey, which is basically Pennsylvania, right, right across the state border. I did a live event last year and he showed up, crossed state lines to go to the live event. So Lewis, you're a main man, shout out. And so let's go back across the border to Pennsylvania, where I met my friend Lewis. And so Pennsylvania was founded by William Penn, who was a Quaker convert and the son of an English admiral. Now, the English admiral probably was not very happy about his son joining this, uh, you know, what was seen back then as a fanatical religious sect. But Admiral Penn died at some point leaving William Penn a sizable fortune which included money that was owed to him by the King of England because remember during the English Civil War there had been a lot of forced loans and so the monarchy owed a lot of money and Charles II was always in financial trouble because in addition to trying to pay the debts from the Civil War and such there was also the issue of Charles II's numerous uh, mistresses and ill legitimate children. So Charles always had trouble with money. So William Penn goes up to Charles II with this idea and he's like, hey Chuck, all right now because remember Quakers, they're very informal, all right? They don't refer to people by honorifics and stuff like that, okay? Which of course was seen by the English upper classes as offensive. But William Penn's got an idea. Hear me out, all right? Hear me out. I'm, you know, just, I've got an idea. You owe my family a lot of money. And I see there is also this large tract of otherwise worthless land. I'm not looking for oceanfront. I'm looking for this inland wooded area. And I would like to create a colony. And if you would give me this land in lieu of paying me the money that you owe me, then we'll just call it even. And Charles II's like, hey, you mean that I can not have to repay a debt and maybe I can get rid of some of these crazy Quakers at the same time? You've got a deal, okay? So William Penn gets this colony from Charles II and he calls it Pennsylvania. Founded in 1682, Pennsylvania is a Latin word meaning Penn's Woods, and which was basically what it was. It was just this wooded tract of land. So William Penn gets this colony, and this is a proprietary colony. Remember, we have discussed the differences between a royal colony, a corporate colony, or joint stock, and a proprietary colony. This is basically a colony that a person or a group of people own. So this is completely outside of the jurisdiction of the crown or anyone else. So William Penn had total control over this colony as the proprietor, as the owner of the colony. And so when he got there, now even though he got this charter from Charles II, so the British government says that he owns all of this land, there were Indians there as well. And as a Quaker, it wasn't something that he was going to do. It wouldn't have been cool just to show up and like all of the other British, hey Indians, get on out of the way. William Penn made a treaty with the Indians and he purchased the land. He got their permission to build this city that he wanted to build. This is a little bit different than we've seen in other British colonies. Now, Roger Williams did a very similar thing in Rhode Island, but this was very decent for him to do as far as by the standards of the time, especially. And so with this land that was given to him by the king and sanctioned by the local Indians, William Penn proceeded to found Philadelphia, Philia. Delphia. This comes from Greek words meaning the city of brotherly love. Now, of course, I think there's a pretty high crime rate nowadays over there, but, you know, that's, that's beside the point, right? We're looking back at this time and what William Penn imagined this to be, the city 
of brotherly love. And of course, a city that would, you know, win Super Bowl championships and stuff like that, too. So, uh, you know, the city's got a great future ahead of it. So as far as that goes, ladies and gentlemen, William Penn, as the proprietor, came up with a frame of government. This frame of government granted complete religious toleration. Now, this is a very Quaker thing to do because Quakers are against using force, okay? Using any kind of force, whether this be warfare or to dictate to someone else's conscience. And so complete religious toleration, which went even further than Maryland, which had Christian toleration. And even at the time, a few years later, James II proclaimed Christian toleration in Britain. Now, of course, he had an ulterior motive as well. It wasn't just out of the kindness of his heart that James II was a Catholic in a Protestant country. So this was convenient for him to do, whereas for William Penn, he's giving complete religious toleration because these are his principles as a Quaker. Now, as far as the economy of colonial Pennsylvania, this was a staple crop economy, which was typical of the middle colonies, growing wheat and corn, which you can remember with this Quaker Oats, okay? This, this goes back to the Pennsylvania colony and the type of economy that they had. Now, to be clear, there is no literal connection between Quaker Oats and the Religious Society of Friends, otherwise known as the Quakers. Whoever founded the Quaker Oat Company, they looked at it in an encyclopedia, saw something about Quakers, and thought, hey, this would be kind of cool. So it was really just a marketing thing. So don't think that like, oh yeah, William Penn, he got there, he found the city of brotherly love, y'all pray however you want, and let's eat some Quaker oats. Not happening. But it was a staple crop economy. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, as I said earlier, I've got plenty of other lectures on colonial America. I've got a lecture on the Quakers as well. So take a look at the stuff that I've got here. Subscribe if you haven't already and look me up on social media. I'd love to interact with you. It's always a pleasure.